Uh, it reminds me a lot of, of the flag-waving and choreographed patriotism that we had back in uh, Nazi Germany a half a century ago. The fact that we got a one-party system which is in control of all three branches of our government, uh, lapdog media that's cranking out propaganda for the administration and make a Nazi blush. Other than that, we're doing pretty good. The legend Chris Christopherson. You know, when the late Sinead O'Connor tore up a photo of the Pope on Saturday Night Live to, as PBS put it, protest against systemic child abuse in the Catholic Church, of which she was a survivor, O'Connor felt the backlash for some time, including at a Bob Dylan show at Madison Square Garden for his birthday. As the boo birds rang down, Christopherson, the man seen right here, had a simple message. They told me to get her off the stage, and I said, I'm not about to do I went out and I said, don't let the bastards get you down. (laughs) There are many stories of his iconic status in society and leftist politics, but one that stands out allegedly involves this guy pictured with him. The story goes the nameless singer had a huge hit about bombing America's enemies until there was nothing left. This was when Willie Nelson turned 70. It was a birthday function. There's almost no doubt according to some reports, that it was this dude. From Rolling Stone's Ethan Hawke, yes, the actor. Keith said happy B-Day to Nelson, then allegedly told Christofferson, none of that lefty stuff out there tonight, Chris. Christofferson would ask what the star had said. You heard me, he uttered back. Don't turn your back to me, boy, Christofferson shouted. Some of the biggest names in music were watching it all unfold backstage at the Beacon Theater. Christofferson would ask rhetorically, you ever worn your country's uniform? The reply was simply, what? Christofferson fired back, don't what me, boy. You heard the question. You just don't like the answer. Have you ever served your country? The answer is no, you have not. He'd continue. Have you ever killed another man? Huh? Have you ever taken another man's life and then cashed the check your country gave you for doing it? No, you have not. So shut the F up. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. The young star would simply say, whatever. The best line of it all? Christofferson would say to Rolling Stone's Hawk, you know what Waylon Jennings said about guys like him? Hawk shook his head. They're doing to country music what pantyhose did to finger effing, Christofferson stated. To say he was the epitome of an American is a severe understatement. Christofferson was featured in Sports Illustrated. Yes, that Sports Illustrated. The year was 1958. Chris would play tons of sports, including rugby, football, and even compete in the Golden Gloves boxing tournament. When asked by Men's Journal if he has any scars, he'd answer, I got scars on my face that tell some kind of story. I'm looking in the mirror and I got one scar that's really two scars, half from a baseball bat and half from playing football in college. I'll tell you though, after a while, your face gets so wrinkled up, you can hardly see them. He'd also be asked who was the toughest man he has ever known. Whenever people want to really make progress, some have to sacrifice a lot. And I like to say, um, um, uh, white America right now spending $30 million a day in Asia. Black and white boys are dying unjustly for nothing just to free somebody else. So why should I worry about going to a little old jail to free my poor people who's been catching hell here for 400 years? This was his answer, the greatest, Muhammad Ali. On the topic of boxing, Men's Journal would ask, what is the best way to win about? Here was his answer. I boxed in golden gloves at Oxford and still know how to throw a straight left jab. Your weight has to be behind the punch to make it better. Put your left foot in front of you, your right foot behind you. As you punch, your shoulder and hips come around, but you don't want to cock your arm. Just extend your arm straight out. It's effective. I once broke a guy's nose in the alley in Germany and didn't have to throw any more punches. This was also a man who was a Rhodes Scholar, but left before earning his degree to become a health helicopter pilot in the United States Army. He would leave his role as an Army Airborne Ranger to pursue music. His politics, meanwhile, aligned with someone who, to put it simply, got it. 
In the 80s, he began pushing his political beliefs to the forefront. He would speak out against the United States' involvement in Central America, both in the press and in his songs, in his lyricism. Furthermore, in a 1991 interview, he was broached on the following subject, the state of the United States, the imminent Iraq war. Quote, it reminds me a lot of the flag-waving and choreographed patriotism that we had back in Nazi Germany a half century ago. With a lapdog media that's cranking out propaganda for the administration that make a Nazi blush. Via the nation, he also did benefit concerts for Palestinian children and saw his career suffer as a result. Surprise, surprise. Quote, I found a considerable lack of work after doing concerts for the Palestinian children, he would say. And if that's the way it has to be, that's the way it has to be. If you support human rights, you gotta support them everywhere. Amen. Laura Barton of The Guardian added of his political songs, he would produce the law is for the protection of the people. 1986's What About Me, which questioned the right-wing military hostility in Central America and 2006's anti-war anthem in the news. The documentarian Ken Burns would tweet, I loved everything about Chris Christopherson. He was a poet of the everyday. You can find joy even in his sad songs. And that awareness of joy is what he calls a blessing. He will be missed. When I look back on this man's legacy, it is impossible to fit into a video, you know, a clip. Because what I see, and as we have covered, is the transformation of an entire genre being hijacked by the worst bad faith actors politically, using it as leverage in order to woo the masses into thinking that it is their home turf of a genre. And I disagree with that premise because country music was not founded on licking the boot of a billionaire or going to war against enemy, folks that are not our enemies, but through the demonstrations via mass media are painted uh, as cartoonish, cartoonish villains that we have to bomb incessantly. What I would say is this is a genre of music that represents every day people. They represent the poorest. They represent the working class. They represent the middle class. They represent unions. They represent labor. They represent anti-racism. What they represent is the complete inverse of Jason Aldean's stupid ass song. I'm sorry for cussing. It's the inverse of Toby Keith. It is the inverse of mainstream country. And what frustrates me is this identity, its origins, have been completely whitewashed. And now when you see country, you see flag humping, Trump loving listeners. And that is not what it is about in the slightest. And that's also why a lot of people, don't get me wrong, it's very popular, but a lot of people have been turned off by it is because it doesn't represent their laurels. And if you go through music history, one will easily find that there are many answers to their questions and it is not loving the people that you think care about you, which are the bad faith actors that I listed and then some.